Hi YouTube, Neil here with Facelift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. So in this week's video, I'm gonna show you how to re-upholster an armchair. This is a swivel and a rocking chair at the same time, but it's basically an armchair. So in this video, we're gonna concentrate on how to rebuild a seat, lashing the seat in, rebuilding the arms, um, taking templates at the front of the arms. So there's many things that we've been requested recently. So as always, if you like upholstery tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you are aware whenever we upload new videos. So don't forget to follow us on our socials. We've got Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Some exciting news, the Academy is on its way. We are hoping to launch in late spring. So just keep your ears to the ground, follow us on all the socials, and we'll keep you updated as we go along. So let's get into this video. This is how to reupholster an armchair slash swivel chair slash rocking chair hybrid from the Americas. Right guys, welcome, welcome. So as you can see, we have this chair, it needs to be reupholstered. We've got a lovely fabric to do it in. So yeah, this is a rocking chair. As you can see, it rocks and it spins sometimes. 80% of the time it works every time. The first thing we're going to do is start stripping it down. We need to get the mechanism off underneath first, then we need to get the bottom off, then we'll start stripping all of the pieces out. Here, I want to have a look at this because I think it looks like it's top stitched, but it also looks like it's piped at the same time. So I need to have a look at this arm because basically with reupholstery, sometimes it takes a bit of vision to look at it and go, what can I do to make this chair better? You can see here that that arm is dipping and all baggy so you can see that obviously the padding's gone inside these arms so we're obviously gonna have to repad them but we'll have to get the fabric off and have a look first so let's take the cushion off God. so oh oh yeah i forgot that this chair is american as you can see there macy's modern classics so macy's i believe in new york I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong. So Macy's chair, but my mum calls it Bloomies. So American chair, let's start stripping it out and get to it. Whoa. So you can see that the mechanism is quite heavy. First thing we need to do is get that out. So let's get that out, get this bottom off, and then we can start stripping the fabric off. So if you're working with mechanisms, it's also important to mark, mark the front and the back because you don't want to get it the wrong way around. So I just marked it using a bit of chalk just so I know. But when it comes to putting it back together, I know where it goes. There's the mechanism from the chair from Bloomies. Also, I'm very aware that Bloomingdale's and Macy's are different places, but I like to just be fun. Right, so now we've got the mechanism off, we're gonna start ripping all this fabric off. Come on, you son of a gun. There's a lot of softwood in here. You know, it's not a hardwood frame, but it looks like ply, so it looks like it's fairly strong. Obviously, for a chair like this, you know, to have a mechanism that spins and rocks, it's hard to do it all out of hardboard because um, it would cost a fortune. You know, it is ply and it is strong and I think it is quite a decent age, this chair. First thing I'm going to do is now flip it over and start getting all these staples off here. Then we can start getting... You can see if this comes apart, actually. So... Right, so I'm just going to use my staple lifter and start lifting all these old staples up and just see how easy it's going to come up. So the first thing I can see here, guys, it's a strip, it's a metal strip. I think it's just called metal gripper. It's not the same as metal gripper. It is actually just a metal strip that is stapled on. So this is what it is. So that is stapled on. It's folded under the fabric and then stapled on. So there it is. So I'll show you this side as well because we'll get a better shot, better light. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing hold of that 
yanking and that's pulling the gripper out. Just show you what I did with this piping. So as this is softwood, you will get quite lucky sometimes and just give that a good, it's all running off in strips, but there is, it is, it is gonna lift some staples as well. So another way guys, I'm gonna clear this fabric out is by using my Stanley knife and just running around the edge. So see all that's come off now. Um, I will clear this bottom out, you know, all these staples, so there's no fullness underneath there. And there's our outside back off. Take this Dacron off as well. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same on the arm. So I'm gonna run my blade along the outside of the staples. So we get most of this fabric off and I can clear the bottom out later. Outside arms. So again, you can see that, that gripper there just came straight out. Now I'm hoping that this Bloomies chair is gonna do me a favor here. So when I grab the fabric and the back tacking strip, so the back tacking strip is a cardboard strip that we use a lot here. If you grab the fabric and the back tacking strip, it should all lift. Like so. So then you've got all these staples lifted here. So you can strip all these out. Right guys, I'm stripping out. This is the top of the back. So I'm just gonna show you a little tip. So you can see under here, that, that fabric is all stapled on and that's the pipe in at the top of the back. So if we pull that back, and you pull underneath the piping cord like that, a lot of these staples are gonna lift. And that's a really good little tip. So try and get underneath the piping cord, and just run, because obviously there's three or four fabrics on top of each other there. You've got more chance of lifting the staples if you get to the bottom. Okay. All right. Right guys, so I'm stripping this chair down. It's strange. I can't remember coming across this um, before, but what they've done is, I'll show you this side. So what they've done is they've stapled the fabric onto the wood. Then they put the fabric over it and back tacked around it and then pulled the fabric back. And then they put the fabric on then the back tack and then they've put this bit, bit of foam back on top and then just pulled the fabric back. Which, you know, it works, but I don't like it. They don't like it. So, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that, but what I'm gonna do is strip it down. So I'm gonna take all the fabric off, get it to its bare frame, not its bare frame, I'm gonna keep some of the foam on, obviously. Um, but the front, so I'm gonna strip off totally and see how I can change this, because I think this chair could look a lot nicer. So what I'm gonna do is carry on stripping this foam down. Let's see if I pull this foam back here. You can see there's a cardboard strip that they've used to tack this fabric down which is unusual to say the least Macy's of America I might get a copyright strike excuse me sir you used our name in your video and you talk negatively about our products you're a ban from publishing this video kind regards the America Right guys, so we've got to this point here where we stripped it all down. I'm going to put some, some webs on there. We're going to put some new one inch over the top there. We're going to go half inch on the front. Um, these webs are a bit loose as well, so I'm going to take them off. I'm going to put a nice edge there. I'm going to do a double border on the front. Yes, and then we're going to do a facing that goes all the way down. So the facing is going to go all the way down there. Um, how to make a template for a facing. So yeah, we'll do that as well. And we'll just generally have a good time. So what I'm going to do now is strip these webs off. Finish stripping the seat off because there's a lot of staples lifted up. Then we're down to the bare bones. Um, the back stain on, the springs are fine. The foam's fine. So the back stain as it is, it's just the arms that we need. The arms in the seat that we're going to redo. Pull that nice and tight, get all that tension out. So see there we've gone under, over, under, over. This one we've gone over, under, over, under. We're gonna do that alternatively.
So if we swing this round, I'll show you the back. Here's the back of the chair. And then back to the front. Under, so over. Right, so that's the seat webbed up. Now we need to do the arms. Now we're gonna do a back to front. Cause it's already got strength there because that wood rail, so we go here. Now you don't have to use elastic webbing for this. You can use Hessian webbing. You could use like polypop webbing, which is like a thin plastic. This will do the job nicely, so. Right, guys, so as you can see, that is all prepped up. Um, I wouldn't say fully prepped up. So now we need to put our protective layers on. So that's either Hessian on the seat and the arms or a decent fabric which is strong enough to keep it protected to stop the foam from collapsing through the webs because it will do unless you protect it. So we're going to put something on there now. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just measuring the bit of fabric I'm going to need for this. I'm actually going to use an old bit of fabric just to show you guys that it doesn't have to be Hessian. Um, you can use an old bit of material that's strong enough to use as a barrier. So it's just to protect the webs and give it extra strength as well. So I'm measuring the widest point here, which is about 30 inches. And it's about 30 inches front to back. These are a lot smaller. That's about 13 inches by the length of the back. That's about 28. So I'm just going to go and cut them now and I'll show you how I'll fix them. So guys, I normally use Hessian. Um, but this time I am going to show you just using an old scrap bit of fabric and I'm using it as the platform that goes on top of the webs and protects the webs from, or the foam from the webs, shall we say. So I'm just tacking around, practicing a cut here. So when you're putting this stuff on, you, it's really good for practicing your cuts. And the same on the arm, on the inside arm, just tacking down. And the same on the other arm, just tacking it all the way around, pulling it really tight and really strong, just so it gives you that extra layer of strength. So here guys, I'm making a template of the arm facing using some black bottoming, using a bit of adhesive, and then using a the chalk to template around and get in that shape that I need to cut my face in. And here we are prepping the arm, so we are putting some cotton felt on as like a padding, and then we're going back on with the old foam because there's nothing wrong with it. So we've done most of the arms, we've just got to put the fronts on, which is going to be half inch blue, which we're also going to use on the seat and on the front border. So this is a, as you can see, a tapered bit of chip foam. So that's about an inch and a half at the front and then tapers down to nothing. So that I'm using as my front edge. So I'm just gonna glue that on there. Now we do that because that stops the cushion from sliding out. It gives you a nice edge on the front. That is very firm, that foam. So that's the reason we do that. Um, most sofas, if they've got cushions, they will have either an edge like that or, you know, a bit of one inch that's pulled down or, there might be, if it's, if it's traditionally done, it will be hand stitched. There'll be an edge hand stitched into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut. So you can see there's a bit missing there. It's not an issue. There's gonna be half inch blue foam going over the top. So I want it to sit nice and flush on the front. So that's our front edge. So the next thing I want to do, because basically I want to put a front border on this chair, I'm going to mark it because I want to know where to finish. So I've got half inch blue foam coming over here and I just want to mark a border across where I want it to finish. So you can see from the bottom, 
that is 10 inches to the top of the edge. Now I'm gonna go six. So just marking there, making sure your chair is obviously on a flat surface. So you could use a laser level for this as well, but you might as well, you're better off just drawing that line on. Right, so there is where I wanna finish my foam. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get my blue foam and glue that on. That's perfect right there. So what I've done is I've just pushed it in sort of where I want it to be, making sure you've got plenty either side to get under. The foam needs to go underneath. You don't want it finishing this side because you'll be able to feel it. So I'm just gonna glue that both sides. Remember, we don't want to come over this point here. We don't want to come over there with this foam. So I'm just making sure that my foam finishes bang on that line. So I'm just gonna make a little nip there. Now what we need to do is also glue the back. So we'll do that now. Just wanna make sure this is nice and flat. Now what you wanna do is get that all underneath there. You want it to go right under the arm and the same with the back. So there's a couple of rails here guys. So I'm just gonna cut around them. So that now can all go underneath there. So you can see there where our foam's finishing. So we can cut off anything that we don't need here. We're gonna cut away loads of that. We don't need any of that. You can see where we are now. So we've got too much here. So, I'm gonna do the same over here. Because what's gonna happen here is the arm is gonna come straight down. There's gonna be half inch blue foam from the arm that comes all the way down to the bottom. The, the facing is gonna come all the way down. So what we need to do first is put the seat on. We need to put some Dacron on here. We need to put the seat on, then we can staple the seat off here. Then we need to put the front border on, which is obviously gonna be another a bit of piping, another bit of fabric, and staple it off here. So then when the facing goes on, when we put the arm on with the facing sewn onto it, it covers all of that there. And then we'll hand slip that on last thing. So that's what we're gonna do first. What we'll do is we'll put some dacky on that seat, then we'll cut and sew the seat, and we'll cut and sew the front border, and we'll put them on first, and then we will do the facings. Right, so before we go and cut the seat, we're just gonna glue some Dacron on here. So we glue the front down. Then we'll pull this back and we'll glue all that and then that. Make sure you pull it tight so you don't want any you don't want any ripples in it. And then like you did with the foam, just tuck it under, cut it around the wood. Right guys, so we've just got to measure our seat. So we wanna to go to where the edge finishes, which is about there, you can feel it. It's about six inches from the front. So I can see that I'm gonna need about 12 inches. And then side to side, I'm gonna go the width of the chair, so 31. So 12 by 31, and then on the front border, probably a bit less than that, nine by 26. Right guys, so as you can see by this pattern, um, it's very messy. You can see there's like a central pattern here so obviously we're gonna to have to keep that in the middle and the pattern repeats either side so the most important thing is i keep the pattern in the middle so there's like a floral flower here so i need to keep that in the center and obviously it's a velvet as well so i want to feel which way the pile goes and the pile goes that way so it's smooth running down that way so this is the top of the fabric so to get the center i need to work out from this middle point because my first cut is wider than this section here so 31 is 15 and a half, and then 12. Do be careful though, because some fabrics companies don't cut the pattern straight, but I know these guys and they do it very well. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting that fabric and I'm folding it in half and I'm just gonna put a nip here in the top so I know where the center is. So you can see my flower there. That's the center of my pattern. So I've got a nip in the center, so I know that that is also the top of the material. And that's where I need to put my label. So while we're at it, we might as well cut the front border and the piping. 
but I think this would be better this way just to sort of show you guys the pattern of the material. So you can see here, that is my center, but that pattern also repeats over here and over here. When working, you know, if you wanna do this well, you need to make sure that your pattern follows everywhere. Now this is too busy to have like a clear pattern repeat. If the pattern wasn't so busy, then I would, I would definitely match the seat to the front border so the pattern flows up and then you try and match the cushion to it as well so it all flows straight up. But this is very busy, so we don't have to worry about that so much because um, it's quite messy. So as you can see, the pattern is there and I need my front border to be 28 inches wide but the pattern needs to be in the middle. So if you obviously you jump over to this side, I haven't got enough fabric either side to get it out. So I have to take it out the middle. So that's our front border. So I'm just gonna fold that in half, nip the top, and I'm also gonna mark it front border because I don't wanna get it mixed up with the chair because it's fairly similar and I don't, obviously it ain't gonna fit if we put them the wrong way around. So I'm just gonna mark top, front border. Let's go and sew up the piping, the front border, and then we can start doing some upholstery. I'm just gonna cut a bit of piping cord out here as well, just cause there's not enough up the side yet. Well guys, so I'm just showing you my seat platform. So this is like a black bottoming, it's not bottoming fabric, I shouldn't say that. It's a lining fabric, so it's great for going under cushions. So what I've done is I've just centralized that I've centralized this pattern as well. Then I've also got my facelift label because I am very, very posh. So that's gonna sew onto there. That's gonna sew onto there. So all of those three pieces are gonna sew together. And then we will sew a webbing onto it as well. Now the webbing is so we can lash, we can sew the seat on so we get a nice edge and we get a nice dome as well. So let's sew that up. So you can see there guys, there's my nips. So they will all line up. So as long as I keep them nips in line, it should be fine. So let's sew that up, sew a webbing on, and then we'll start putting it on. So we're just sewing up this, this seat platform, guys. So literally I'm just sewing my fabric to my lining. Now, obviously we need to get our Then we need our web, which is here. So this webbing's got a green line on it, so I can just line the edge of the fabric up with that green line. I know it's straight. So I'm just gonna cut that off a bit longer than I need. Now we can go and put that on. Right guys, so hopefully this is a good angle for everyone to see. So this is the front of the chair here. The edge goes across there. So what you can do is, if you want to, is mark. You can mark along where your edge is. Not 100% necessary, but you can draw a line across. I'm just trying to find my centre, so I know where my label needs to go exactly. So that's 21 arm to arm, so 10 and a half. So that's my centre point there. All right, so I'm gonna try and stay out of the way of this. So I need to find my centre point, and I'm gonna lay my centre point here right on the mark and I'm going to lay that green line in the middle of the web right the way across. So I'm just going to tuck. So what I've done is I've pushed my web through so I'm just going to put a temp in there just to hold that in place. Now I'm going to do the same the other side and then I know that that web, that, that seat is firmly in place. It's not going to move. You can always double check your measurements as well. Use a, use a tape measure. So now what we need to do is using some buttoning twine and my needle. So I'm gonna hand stitch along here. So what I've done is I've dropped the needle down. I need to go underneath, come back up, and then basically we're just gonna do that across. We're gonna make the loops about two inches long. So we're basically lashing the seat. We're tying the seat to the platform, which is gonna make it stronger. It's gonna give you a nice dome so the cushion sits in nicer and it just you know holds the seat in position properly. So if I lift this up, so hopefully you can see my needle here. So we're gonna come out and we're gonna go back up in about the same position. But hopefully you can see here guys that there, is my twine. 
So I want to get that fixed on as well nicely. So I'm just going to put a couple in there like so. As you can see guys, I'm going to drop that needle down there and we want to make sure we stay in between here. So you don't want to come over this side because you'll see that on the platform. You want to stay on here, which is your salvage. So I'll drop that down there. Now we're underneath. Pull that through. So try and keep it straight. Right guys, as you can see, this is the top of the seat. This has been quite difficult though because there's a big block of wood under there, obviously for the mechanism. So I've had to sort of go in at angles, which has been quite hard to film. But you can see here, so what I'm going to do is drop that down. So now we've missed the wood again. There's a big block of wood. We've just missed that. So I'm going to take you underneath. If I take you in from the angle, you can see how that's looking. So that's lashed all the way across. So here we're going to come out. You're going to see this. Right, so here we go, guys. We're going back up through there. But you also want to check on the top. So I've missed that just slightly. So I'm just going to come down on my salvage, which is exactly where I want to come through. So I need to go down once more, go down once more and then come back up and then we can pull it through underneath the arm. Right, so going up one more time, we're gonna go up quite close to where we were. Again, don't push too far through, you don't wanna come out in the wrong place, you need to double check this. Ah, look at that. Perfect, came straight through exactly where I need to be. So now, what you can do now is tighten all these. So that side is obviously stapled down, so we need to tighten this way. So I'm just going to work my way along, pulling these, pulling all the tension out. Push the rest of that under there, and then that will get stapled on there, like the other side. So we can staple that on there now. doing here guys is just laying the fabric flat pushing it where it needs to be and then making my cuts around the rails so what I've just done there guys is I've just cut around those rails at the back so now we've got that sat on nicely we can pull all this Pulling all the lining nice and tight. Right guys, so now we've just got to make our cuts into here. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting my finger into there. Right guys, so the next thing I've done is I've just made a cut into here. I'll show you this side. When we've put it on, you need to make sure your pattern's in the center because you can, by pulling too much either side, you can take your pattern off the center. Make sure your pattern's in the center. So I've double checked and we're good. So by doing this, by looking down at it, I can see, I can see if I've got any lumps and bumps or ripples, which I don't have. I'm gonna show you how I make this cut. So I'm just gonna come up at an angle and I can feel that the rail is down there. So I'm just gonna to aim towards that and I'm just gonna nip into here as well. So now that can go under there. That bit of fabric can fold under there. See here now how we've got a lovely finish and that can just be pulled across. Right guys, as you can see, we've got a lovely finish here. So that's gonna pull across. So we actually we'll do that now. We might need to adjust it a bit more later. So I'm just gonna cut that lot out because that doesn't need to be there. So now we need to put our piping cord on. So we've still got our line here. So obviously I'm just gonna put one here and then one. Right, so it's really important to keep this straight. Obviously here on the ends as well is where you wanna cut the piping cord out because you don't want too much thickness here. It's where the arm's gonna come over.
Right guys, so now I'm putting on my front border. So I've obviously made my mark. I know where the top is and I know where the center of this pattern is. So I'm just gonna make sure that's bang on the money there. So I'm gonna pull it nice and tight this way. Same this way. So there she is. We just need to get some cardboard strip, some half inch blue, maybe some Dacron, and then we're gonna get this finished. We're just gonna put our back tacking strip on. So obviously you wanna push this cardboard strip right to the top of your piping cord. You'll feel it, you'll get resistance. It will try and push back. Remember a staple close to the top, don't staple in the middle because when you pull it, it's gonna bend. So I'm just gonna check that. I'll get rid of that, I'll get another one in there. And another one there. And I'm just gonna pull that nice and tight, make sure. It sits lovely and it does. So now we just need to put some, some half inch blue foam to get that nice bulbous finish like we've got on the front there. And then we can tack that off and then that's the seat and the front board are done. Then we can talk about the arms. Right guys, so now we're gonna put our foam. We're gonna put our foam on. So I'm just gonna glue. I'm also gonna glue the foam as well. So we want this to go right up to the top of the back tacking strip. So what we will also do is we're gonna staple it. So we'll pull that down and have a look. Nice, nice. So we're also gonna put some Dacron on there as well, but also, we also want to make sure that this, that we stay, so that line's gonna come down there, so we don't wanna to go too far over with this half inch. So I'm just stapling it down here as well, so it's. So we're also gonna put Dacron on there as well. So here we go. So you see how that looks lovely already? That looks really nice. If I pull too tight, we lose that sort of domeness. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put this on the floor so you can see it from a better angle. Right guys, so obviously you want to keep the pattern in the middle. I've marked there. So yeah, that's bang on. So I'm just gonna pull that down without pulling too tight. And all I'm doing here is using my hand to take the excess out of the material and then using my fingers. So working my way out from the middle in here guys, you remember the arm is gonna be coming down here, so we wanna keep that. So, that is the seat and the front border on. Right guys, so now we're gonna get our fronts on. So, I'm just gonna to glue to here. I'm not gonna glue this section down yet, because yeah, I wanna leave that loose for now. So now what I'm gonna do by using my, um, my electric foam knife, I'm gonna take off all this excess foam. Right, so now we've got our blue foam on. I'm gonna go and get our template that we kept from yesterday. So you see there, it is definitely at least half an inch too small. So what you could do now is put some black bottom in on there and template that. But I can use this and I know I'm just gonna add on, so I need to add on another half an inch to finish and then half an inch for sewing. So I'm gonna cut that about an inch bigger and then the fabric is just gonna go all the way round and sew to here. And then see all this excess fabric here is gonna get stapled round the corner. So let's go and cut those arms, sew them up and then try them on. So before we cut, we just need to get our measurement for the arm. So I'm gonna come from the very bottom here. That is 38. And then front to back is 32. So you can see we've got our template. Um, I've put some weights on it to hold it nice and flat. So we're going about an inch bigger. So there we have it, there's our shape for the arm. So I'm gonna flip that over and copy it for the other side, but we'll sew one up and then see how we go. Right guys, I'm just cutting up my piping cord now for the fronts. So I'm just cutting it on the bias, meaning I'm cutting it at an angle. 
to make sure that it curves nicely. Because if you cut it straight or across the roll, it doesn't sit as nice and if, it, if it's cut at a nice angle. Right, so I'm just sewing up my piping cord. Then I'll attach it to the face, then we'll sew the arm onto the face. Right guys, so I've sewn up my piping cord. So now we need to put the piping cord onto the face in and then we'll sew the arm on. So this is nice and straight here. We don't need to worry too much. But now as we come towards this curve, we need to start putting nips into this cord. So it sits nicer around the curves. So I'm just going every half inch. Now that sits much nicer, it's easier to, to bend. Right, so there's our facing. Now we just need to sew the fabric onto that and we are good to go. And I can feel the, fab, the, the piping cord up against the fabric. This takes some getting used to though, learning how the fabric will sit and how the foot works on the machine against the piping cord. So there we have it. So the first most important thing is that the arm goes on straight. That's really important. So what I've done is I've turned the arm inside out. So I've got my face in here. I'm just gonna press that on there. Now I'm gonna pull the fabric all around. I'm gonna make sure my selvage is all facing the same way. That is super, super important. So I'm just gonna pull that. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get my anchor points on. So I wanna get this arm set in place exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna get, get it sort of held in place. Right, so my first point I'm gonna do is this section here. So I'm literally just gonna get a staple in there to hold that arm in place there. So now what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna work my way back. I'm gonna get one here at the back to hold that in place maybe two and I'm also I'm gonna get under that back and get one underneath that inside back there now I might get another one under here so I'm just putting these an angle so they're easy to take out if I need to because what we're doing at the moment is really just getting this arm in position first before we start making any important cuts so the next cut I'm going to make is on the front of the arm here. What I need to do, hopefully if you guys can see from that angle, we need to pull that down as tight as it will go that way. Then you can sort of feel in there where the rail is. So I'm going to cut up here and then come in at an angle slightly. Well, I can feel that my rail is about there. So I'm just going to come up a bit more. I'm just gonna put one in the front here to hold that in place. So what we wanna do is get a nice tight pull down here. We'll come up a little bit more, I'm just gonna nip as much as I need to. Now I can get that pulled nice and tight. Another thing I can do is grab my pliers, pull that using the pliers to sort of give me a nice grip. So there we've got a lovely, lovely fixing on the front. So you can see now that the arm is starting to come together. It's starting to like, you know, starting to um, get into its correct position. So I'm just tucking all that under. Then we've got a few cuts at the back here to make. So you can see this rail runs around to here. So we want to get that. So now we can push all of that lot through there. So now I'm gonna go around the back and I'm gonna get that stapled off. Right, so this is the back of the chair, guys. So all I'm doing is I'm using my arm to push this through. Make sure I get a nice, a nice strong fix in here at the back. Temporaries, so they can come out if they need to. 
Now we have all this fabric through guys, we can actually start tacking off this bottom section here. So I'm just pulling, you can actually push down as well from this side, pull all the tautness out. Right guys, so what I've done is I've got the chair on its side now, so this is the top. So what I'm doing now is pulling this fabric round and shooting onto the bottom of the arm, let's get rid of that piping. So it's good that we start here and work our way back because we've got enough fabric here, we don't want too much here because then we've got to start making folds. We're just going to carry on pulling that round, remove this temporary here. So you want to make sure this is nice and smooth as well, so working from this angle does give you that, that sort of flex that sort of flexibility to make sure that it does look nice and it's nice, there's no bobbling, there's no tack ties. Tack ties, remember, are where the fabric ripples. I'm just removing these temporaries out of the back. Get that one out of there. So I'm just cutting out loads of this excess that isn't needed. So what we're doing now is we're just cleaning out the front of this arm. So we're working all this fabric down. So what we want to do is make sure that that is dead straight on the front. So I'm pulling that down as tight as I can possibly pull it. Keeping it nice and straight. So I'm not going to pull too tight because we're going to pull the cord over. But it's going to have to be hand slipped anyway. So, so we're going to hand slip that down when we're finished. So now all we have to do, attach that piping cord on there. And then we can put our outside back on this. So guys, that is how you upholster an arm facing. Nice and clean. It's a good job, man. Right, so guys, I'm just going to make a template for this back. So we're going to cut and sew that up now. So I've just got a big bit of fabric here that I'm going to lay over. Make sure we've got plenty. So it's definitely going to need a collar on it. So I'm going to do that both sides. Now this one isn't going to be piped, so it doesn't have to be as accurate as the last one. So what I'm going to do now is get my pen and just run a nice line down there and then I'm going to angle that off down there. As we come to the bottom we're curving off this way to give us plenty to get underneath because if you cut it straight you're going to be tight, you're not going to get enough to get that under and pull it to the rail and then staple it off. Mark that top, now let's go and cut that. So this is obviously the top of our arm so we're going to come down at a nice angle like this. I'm going to cut quite close to the line, not allowing half an inch because I didn't have it really tight. And here at the bottom, I'm really going to flare that in. Right, so I'm just going to cut half of this guys, so I'm going to do one half because what I did is I folded it over, made sure I had my template in the centre, folded it over. So now I'm just going to cut one half, which is this side, I'm just making sure I've got my pattern in the middle. Well there's our fabric, and we just need to make sure that goes on straight, and we need to cut our, cut our collars now. So now we're going to sew this collar on, onto here and around down to here, both sides, so let's go and do that. In our last video we went through collars in detail, so I'll leave that in the link above. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is lift this up and get some felt in there because it feels a bit empty, it needs a bit more, it needs a bit more padding. And then I'm going to glue that back down, let's see how that feels. Now we're also going to put some extra Dacron on the back, some extra thick, much better look and much more luxurious. This is important guys, making sure you've got enough to go underneath to start. So I always do it this way to protect the platform from getting dirty. So what I do is I tuck it to where I want it and then I will lift. So now we can glue, we can glue that without damaging the seat. Make sure you don't get any on the arms. So 
just gonna tuck that lot through there, make a couple of cuts into here, and we can tuck that underneath there. Same over this side. Making sure you've got no ripples in this Dacron at all. Gonna start putting this inside back on. So here I'm fitting the inside back, but like I said earlier, in our previous video, we went through collars and inside backs in detail, so I'll leave that in the link above. So we're gonna do this outside arm today, or both sides. So what I've done is I've pulled it over the edge of the bench, so I've got a good couple of inches, well, a good five, six inches over the side of the bench, so you know we can get underneath and tack everything off. So the first thing we need to do is to get our fabric. So that's exactly where we want it to be. So I'm just gonna flip it up there. I'm just going to start tacking it into place. Right guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to back tack along here, which is cardboard strip. And then here, we're going to put a metal gripper down the side to finish it off. So we're going to do that first. And then we've got to obviously put on put a lining fabric on, which is our strengthener, which is our barrier, which will give you that good quality, that good strength. And then, You've got to put Dacron on as well. So the Dacron's gonna give you that extra bulbous kind of strength behind it to make it a high quality piece of furniture. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, is put my metal gripper all the way to the top. Don't forget to use your tin snips to take all those sharp edges off. We're gonna take that right the way up. And see, we're pushing that, we're pushing that right up to the cord. So then what we'll do is we'll push that about 50% down. So you don't want it to be fully open. You want to be able to push the fabric in. So we're just going to push that sort of semi-closed. So now that's on, we need to put our back tack along here, which is our cardboard strip. Now what I'll do is I'll probably flip the chair over to show you that. So I'll show you how we put the cardboard strip on. Then after we've got that on, then we'll put our barrier cloth and our Dacron, and then we can start finishing it off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our cardboard strip on, which is our back tacking strip. So I'm just cutting that where I want it to finish. So you can see I'm stapling very close to the edge, as I don't want this to roll over when I pull it tight, which it will. So now what we do is we pull that up, Double check everything is grand, which it is, looks good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our barrier cloth on and then we're gonna put our uh, Dacron on. So I'm just pulling this super tight. Like a drum. It's exactly how you want it to sound. Right, so now we need to put our Dacron on. And then we're good to go. Right, so now we're gonna glue, glue that up and up she goes. At the top, I'm just gonna leave enough to go over because that'll give me a nice edge to finish with the, um, with the fabric and it'll make it nice and strong. But I've just got to cut this away I'm just stapling down in front of the metal gripper. Right guys, so now we're ready to put this arm on. Well, get it finished. So, first thing I'm gonna do is put one in the middle. Temporary. Same at the back. Same at the front. 
So that's sort of holding our fabric in place. Now we can work. What we're going to do is we're going to start. What you want to do is pull that fabric in from the front. You don't want to pull it this way and then in. You want to pull it. You want to make sure it's the tension's out and then just pull it in from the front. I'm using my regulator or my needle to mark the fabric. So you can see there we've got a perfect mark of where to cut. So I'm just going to cut just away from that. So what we're going to do now guys is simply just... So now we can take these temporaries out and give it a right good tug in. Nice and tight. Pull it as hard as you can and start working your way down. So first of all, I'm attaching my piping cord. And we have previously done a video on, especially on how to do an outside back. So we're gonna speed through this, but I'll talk through it anyway. Here, here's going on the back tacking strip, the cardboard strip. Then I'm going to check it, make sure I haven't missed. Then on goes the metal gripper. Using the tin snips at the bottom. Then I'm pressing the metal gripper down. Now goes on the protective barrier, which is an old fabric, which gives you a decent bit of strength takes you to the next level really because a lot of companies don't bother doing that and you can just feel it you can go up and tap it and it feels empty but when you do this your hand just bounces off it like a drum and that's quality so there we go big and strong eh? so here we are just finishing off the outside back just running the fabric into the gripper cutting away the excess material and then hammering down the metal grip up and then stapling down off the bottom. God, fast. So we have previously done a video dedicated to hand slipping, but just wanted to show you on this one, the bit that we do hand slip is the part of the front of the arm where it meets the seat because there's a little bit of a gap and you can get your finger in there. So it's, it's a good thing to do to hand slip it and close it shut totally. So here we are putting on the bottom in using dip reel, which is a bottom in material. So I put this all the way on and then I cut out the bit that I don't need to get the mechanism in. And that's what we're doing here. And then we cover that bit of wood later. Right guys, so that is how you re-upholster a rocking slash swivel chair. Isn't she pretty? Thanks for watching, hope you found this useful and we'll see you next time.